A while ago, I made a video called Why Nobody Loves Shinji, a video about why so many people seem to hate Evangelion's protagonist. That video is one of my most popular videos, and might even be the reason you found my channel, but it's also a video that I don't think aged particularly well. In my original video on this topic, I focused a lot on how wrong people are to believe that Shinji is a pussy. I insinuated that people who consider Shinji anything other than a realistic sympathetic protagonist must not understand Eva. I came to the conclusion that only depressed people can truly understand Shinji and all of Evangelion. And a lot of people agreed with me at the time, but years later I now have a more nuanced opinion on this situation. So now two years later it's time to answer the question, why do people hate Shinji and are they wrong to do so? Let's start off by correcting a mistake I made last time. I think it's pretty obtuse to believe that the average Evangelion hater is a neurotypical person who just can't accept or understand Shinji as a character. It's not like there's two kinds of people in the world, Shinji haters and depressed people. And it's not like being depressed and hating Shinji are mutually exclusive. I mean, my reason for liking Shinji is that I find him relatable without him being designed to be hashtag relatable. Shinji isn't an aesthetically pleasing, pastel-colored, houseplant-growing, cat-loving, book-reading, depressed teen. Shinji hurts himself through self-preservation. He is cowardly, he is repressed, he is socially inept. Even with all the progress Shinji makes as a character, he still finds ways to throw it all away. I appreciate Shinji because he is a fantasy protagonist suffering through mental illness in an ugly way I find to be true to life. But I now understand that may be incredibly uncomfortable to a lot of similarly depressed people. I think it's really easy for Shinji stands to believe that the average Shinji hater would be someone who is the exact opposite of all the things Shinji represents. You know, someone who is extroverted, confident, not depressed, and active both socially and physically. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's a lot of viewers who fit that description who have a hard time understanding Shinji, but I think the ones who hate Shinji the most are the ones who understand him the most. Let's use our imagination for a second, okay? Imagine you're a depressed teenager. You just got home from another 8 hour school day and you're absolutely miserable. Maybe you're being bullied or maybe your grades are bad, the important part is that your life sucks right now. And your favorite form of escapism is watching anime. Would you want to watch a series where the main character is plucked from his mundane life, given a mech, moves in with a hot babe and a horny teen redhead, but all this protagonist does is constantly complain about his new life and actively try to return to his quiet old life? You'd probably hate this protagonist and even this anime, and you'd rather be watching something like Sword Art Online. Okay, okay. Maybe I need to backtrack again and explain that not everyone who hates Shinji also hates Evangelion as a series. There is definitely a portion of the Eva fanbase who are depressed and hate Shinji, but love the series itself. In fact, I can think of a really famous Eva fan who also hates Shinji. This fan is Hideaki Anno. That's right, the creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion hates the main character, and he's gone on record to explain why. Anno has said the parts of Eva he hates the most are the parts where he sees himself, and it's generally understood that Shinji is in many ways a self-insert character for Anno, mostly in Shinji's personal troubles being influenced by Anno's struggle with mental illness. While Anno has the unique privilege of hating a character who is literally inspired by him, I still think it's fair for fans to say, I hate myself, so I hate Shinji, and still be considered valid fans of the series. Moving on to the most obvious point of hatred, let's talk about who Shinji is as a character. When authors begin the character creation process, they usually outline a character's wants and needs. Shinji Ikari's want is to avoid pain, both being in pain and inflicting pain. Shinji self-isolates to avoid the pain that comes with relationships, 
and Shinji runs away to avoid the pain that comes with piloting the Eva. Shinji is a protagonist who wants nothing to do with the story he's in. The mere fact that Shinji is the protagonist of Eva can be an immediate turnoff for a lot of viewers, especially if they don't fully understand the kind of anime they're getting into. This is the official My Anime List synopsis for Neon Genesis Evangelion. Face to face with his father for the first time in years, 14-year-old Shinji Ikari's average life is irreversibly changed when he is whisked away into the depths of nerve and into a harrowing new destiny. He must become the pilot of Evangelion Unit 1, with the fate of mankind on his shoulders. That description might be technically accurate, but it completely misrepresents the whole vibe of the series. I can't imagine how many people went into Evangelion expecting a traditional mecha anime, only to be left with, well, Evangelion. Modern anime fans might not remember a time before Evangelion and all of its wannabe clones, but the series could have easily been a flop with how much it went against the grain. The average mecha anime, take Gundam for example, had a clear motive. Get kids to buy toys. Traditional mecha protagonists looked cool and confident, and when the action started, they were the first ones in battle. Traditional mechs were built to stand tall and heroic, usually with a red, white, and blue color scheme, and their accessories usually included swords or angel wings, you know, heroic stuff. Neon Genesis Evangelion wasn't about that life. The audience's first look at Shinji was him looking melancholic and disconnected in the opening. The first look at Unit 1, the main mech in the series, was it sprouting insectoid wings and snarling covered in what looked like blood. Back then, Evo was controversial for disrupting the wish-fulfillment fantasies of the mecha genre, and I think the series remains polarizing to this day for the same old reasons. At this point in Evangelion's popularity, most anime fans recognize Asuka, Rei, and Unit 1 on looks and reputation alone. So it's fair to think that a lot of first-time viewers will be coming into the series with preconceived opinions. So it doesn't really help Shinji's case that getting the robot Shinji has been a popular meme in the anime community for a few decades. So far, my explanations have involved a lot of finger-pointing at the audience, but I don't actually think the viewers are solely to blame for Shinji's negative reputation. I think the people who trash Shinji the most are the writers of Evangelion. Let me tell you about my favorite sequence in the franchise. In episode 2 of Neon Genesis Evangelion, Misato takes Shinji home to her apartment, but before actually heading home, the two of them make a short stop at a cliffside to watch the sunset over the cityscape. At this moment, Misato looks to Shinji and says, This is Tokyo 3. This is our city, and it's the city you saved. This moment is a beautiful, poignant scene, in both the TV series and the Rebuild movies, but there is one subtle difference in the TV version that makes it hit that much harder. The TV version is lying to you. Both versions of the sequence start with Shinji waking up in the hospital and ends with Shinji laying in his new room. The Rebuild version? is practically a shot-for-shot -shot remake of this scene. But there is a bit of context removed from the movies that changes the whole meaning of this scene. In the Rebuild movie, the sunset scene is placed immediately after Shinji's fight with Sashiel. In the TV series, the sunset scene is placed in the middle of Shinji's fight, making the outcome more ambiguous. In the broadcast version, the first half of the Sashiel fight ends, with Unit 1 taking blow after blow to the head, with Shinji screaming. Then, from Misato's perspective, we learn that Shinji's vitals have dropped to zero. Then there is a cut, and now we are watching Shinji wake up in a hospital room. The writers are leading us to believe that Shinji lost his fight and nerve bailed him out. After being discharged from the hospital and assigned a new home, 
Misato takes Shinji to a convenience store to buy groceries, where Shinji overhears a conversation between two women about evacuating the city after last night's disaster. This scene is meant to perpetuate the idea that Shinji failed. In this light, Misato telling Shinji that he saved the city seems more like a white lie meant to cheer him up. It isn't until Shinji lays down in bed that we as an audience see the outcome of the battle. So why did the writers misdirect us? I believe the sequence was arranged in this manner because it is told from the perspective of Shinji. We are led to believe that Shinji failed because Shinji believes he failed. Throughout this sequence, Shinji is constantly praised for defeating the angel, because from everyone else's perspective, Shinji did beat that angel. Only Shinji knows what happened when the comms went down. Only Shinji knows that the Eva went berserk and killed the angel itself. During this entire sequence, the audience is made to feel like Shinji is a failure, like Shinji is powerless, because that is how Shinji felt when the angel almost killed him, then he lost control of the Eva. One of the major themes of Evangelion is how you view yourself versus how others view you. Keeping that in mind, I think it's natural for some to view Shinji as a pussy, or Misato as a bitch, or Rei as a well-written character. Take Gendo Ikari for example. We begin the series hating him, and we end the series hating him. However, in episode 11, in the still darkness, Shinji witnesses his father working alongside his employees, in a blackout, in sweltering heat, to prepare the evas and save the city. This is one of the few times Shinji shows any positive emotion towards his father, and the writers make damn sure the audience feels it as well, even if all positivity towards Gendo is stripped away some episodes later. So. All I'm saying is, maybe the reason Shinji sometimes seems so hateable is because sometimes we're supposed to hate him. So now we have a better idea of why some people hate Shinji. Maybe it's because they aren't ready for a protagonist to reject their role. Maybe it's because they see the worst aspects of themselves present in Shinji. Or maybe it's because of a conscious decision of the writers that Shinji is seen so negatively. Honestly, I don't think we have to pick and choose with these answers either. It could be any combination of all three. I just don't think it's fair to villainize or look down on someone for how they perceive Shinji. Evangelion is about three child soldiers, given the impossible duty to protect the Earth from an existential threat, and the psychological trauma they are forced to endure. Is it fair to hate one of these children in particular for being a whiny little bitch? Yes, it is fair to hate Shinji for any of these reasons. Shinji is not real. If you called a real child soldier a whiny little bitch, then you'd be a terrible person. I think you can hate Shinji and still walk away from Eva with a valid understanding of it. The only perspective on Eva that I could never defend is believing the series would have been better off without Shinji altogether. Whether you like him or not, the presence of Shinji instead of a traditional mecha protagonist is a key point that makes Evangelion the cornerstone of anime that it is. I can't make you like Shinji or Evangelion. But I can promise you that a series like Dual Parallel or Razafan, anime that are supposed to be Eva but better, will never be a tenth of what Neon Genesis Evangelion succeeds at being. <laughs>